three years ago, Professor Poon Nai, our uh, last uh, uh, keynote speaker from the morning, introduced me to a very unique character. I heard about him for a long time, okay, and at that time, uh, Poon Nai and I, we were involved in a, uh, uh, in a alternative online news platform called uh, Groundbreaking, Po Tu. Right? And, uh, and then Poon Nai was introducing me to Professor Huang Sun Quan, right? And uh, who is very famous, you know, in social movements and new media movements. You know, he was uh, uh, coding uh, for the, uh, in the, the first wave of uh, uh, traditional character, okay, Chinese character uh, uh, blogs, okay, in, in Taiwan. Okay, so he, he's a programmer. Uh, he is uh, also um, editor-in-chief for a very important newspaper, social movement newspaper for minority groups called Po Bao, right? For all the, in Taiwan, which I happen to also, because I work in the journalism school, I also knew that. And, uh, and uh, he is also uh, in the art school, so you can see uh, he has uh, so many okay, different aspects. He's our Renaissance man, okay, now holding positions uh, in Taiwan, okay, in uh, Hangzhou, the uh, 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 academy, Chinese Academy of Fine Arts. He also taught in Hong Kong in Lin Nan, okay, uh, I think one of the best uh, uh, cultural studies programs in, uh, in, in our city. So, uh, b b b and b b most important, people should know, okay, is that uh, uh, Sun Quan's team put together the most Im Im impressive ko Opathon. okay? Uh, in Hong Kong, yesterday and the day before was ko Opathon 2, was the second time they did this. But actually, two years ago, they did one in Shanghai putting coders together with co-ops. And then uh, uh, in two years, okay, uh, Sun Chen and I, we have discussed, and uh, I think mostly it's because of him and his team, they have perfected that model. And uh, I think he will be telling us more about okay, his experiences okay, in, this, uh, in the next uh, half an hour. So let's put our hands together for Professor Huang Sun Chen. Thank you, I'm so shy. Thank you. Uh, Actually, this, this, this subject is assigned by Jack to me. So I, I was a coder, but now it's far from that. And yes, I am in 2002. I'm the founder of the Indie Media Taipei. And 2004, I, with some activists and net activists in Hong Kong, to incubate in media.hk. So here, I want to share some thoughts after those experiences. It's more social aspect, not so technical. So it's the uh, last time, the co-op song two. Um, we, we can say that the, the co-op the co undermines capitalism, or say to fix capitalism in more, is more appropriate. So when we say that for the coding and design of the platform co-ops, a lot of questions arise. What is the special nature of the co-op under the Chinese context? What does the platform for the co-op means? And we should be aware of the premise that the more uh, co-ops there are, the more powerful platform cooperative is. And, oh my god. OK, I just do a, a very simple compare. The one is very famous uh, article, California uh, ideology, and one is co-op. I think the gap between the co-ops and the gigs is not only about the pursuit of economy equality, but also about the differences between cultural and political challenges. The former, the former acts for all participation or nothing at all, while the later mostly pursued you know, some individual talent Genesis achievements. The former face the threat of privatization, while the later is the new liberal vision of the California ideology of uh, accessorialism and solutionism. The former pursue economy justice, that is a better relation of the production. The later one pursued uh, productive forces. And hackers don't like to have doors that cannot be opened, right? But co-ops hope that the door 
well always open. So, but they are more or less aware of the com commonality between them. They all need a sustainable model. They all rely on the results of sharing and mutual benefits. So I have a delusion. <laughs> uh, I'm actually bring uh, co-ops and gigs teams together because I have a thought where we need a stronger, we need more, uh, we need stronger autonomous citizens to challenge the automation society. We not only want to get back the technology back, but also the right to share social value of, of te technical production. So uh, from 2014, right, we do a lot of hexons. We have the R hexons in Hangzhou the first time. And the second time we cooperate with the, the digital miss, uh, now is the digital minister of the Taiwan, uh, Andrew Tom, is very famous hacker in whole Asia to uh, Silver Zone. And we have a lot of video just, <laughs> and this, last time in Shanghai, we do the co-op zone one. And this is this, uh, this time. So be, uh, before this time, uh, co-op zone, we do a lot of studies. Uh, so we held five local panels, two in Taipei, one in Kaohsiung, one in Hangzhou, and one in Hong Kong. So we do a lot of studies. And we did uh, publish an e-book on the gate book. Let's co-op. Uh, we translate a lot of important articles include uh, Triber and Michelle Bowen. <laughs> we still a lot of things. And we uh, have a book like, a small book. They contain a lot of uh, near 50 uh, co-ops and NGOs in this book, and the Chinese and English. So, bef uh, so we, we want to prepare the co-op zone. We do a lot of st uh, studies, things like that. And but I want to share uh, the more important thing is the, uh, the Chinese context, Taiwan, mainland China, and Hong Kong is totally different. Because just like Taiwan, there are 6,000 uh, co-ops in Taiwan, and two-thirds are like, just employee consumption co-ops. <laughs> and maybe you, know, you, you all know the theories and ideas of the co-ops were original, or, original theater in Europe and spread to China in around 19, 1910, uh, I think. And it has been developed for more than a century. In 19, uh, 1934, the cooperative law was announced. And in 1946, there was in act and defined in our Constitution. So, but, but the most important thing is the both side, I mean, China and Taiwan. Co ops has become a policy tool. Because in mainland China, they've gone through the revolution, just like uh, morning the Professor Pan told us, and rushed to get rid of the collective trauma of the people's communes. It was not until 2007 the co-op become the legal in China. And the own, but only agricultural co-ops. In Taiwan, the foundations, non-profit organizations have become mainstream social charities. That's, that's, that's is uh, both give up the most important nature of the co-ops. Let's say economy, justice, and democracy. So, uh, so, if you read the uh, social code, not a technical code, so we, ha uh, we have the four characters, very important in Chinese uh, uh, context. One is indigenous common. Two, we have a lot of social movement, movement and to become a collective. Third, in China, we have the border inferential policy called China ruler constructions. And some of them become a social economy project, like co-op. And the fourth, the emerging urban consumption, co-ops based on the needs for a better life. The first case in the South uh, is the only 200 people, uh, very few. And 
it's very similarly like uh, the smart crews. Uh, for example, I just uh, take a very simple uh, example. Their New Year festival was decided by seven family elders, but they don't vote, they don't discuss even. They just look into each eyes, and if <laughs> see someone eyes with some sad, they say, oh, this Happy New Year, well held three days. Okay, but if your eyes with some pleasure are happy, then we can a big year festival. Like it can last even eleven days. No vote, no discussion. Why? Because they have a really strong social condition, right? They have the common hundred years ago. Okay, another case is <laughs> just this morning. The smart crews is another successful example. It is a tribe that practice communist since hundred years ago. Another case is the uh, Nantang, this morning before. And the Minister Yang, he had no time to explain the long history of the struggle. Because Nantang is a, uh, it's come from the Nantang village in 1998. The local farmer gradually organized farmers' rights association since they opposed ex sex civil uh, taxations and become a f front line organization for the reduced uh, reduce and uh, of the agricultural tax movements. For more than 10 years, the organization has developed a uh, diverse uh, community. And the one important thing is that they through the collect, uh, collabor uh, collaboratory, uh, the village coordinate to build a public activity center together. So we can see the, the public, public activity centers. Another case is uh, uh, Puhan community. Uh, Puhan uh, covers the, the two township in, in uh, almost uh, th 43 villages, communities. And there are maybe more than 6,000 households. And in 1998, a couple of Zheng Bin Lao-Shi and Xie Fu Zheng Lao-Shi established a Zai Zi, Zaiz Technology Center, just a company. They just use the co-op to build this uh, beautiful country. So, okay, this is some uh, stories. It's, we, we just uh, quick, these examples. It's a Lankau in Henan province, China. Uh, that was a you know, abandoned village, just like you, you can think in, in border China. And at first, they, they, be, they install a mutual fund co-op. Then the one of the village called Haochun, Hechun, co-ops had followed the design of the China Lula Construction, uh, Construction Institute to construct a comprehensive mutual fund assistant, system, uh, assistance system to ease the temporary turnover the production of life. With the passage of time, residents have uh, shifted from solving pro uh, production problem to paying attention to the problem of uh, f farmland occupy, uh, occupation and housing earthquake resistance caused by the village expansions. We have a lot of story in, in China, a lot of villages. Uh, the one famous uh, case is Haotang, very similar with uh, the Lankau. They threw a co-op through the building house together and to earn, to let the village become alive. So we have a lot of story just like that. And the last one is the, the homemaker union consumer co-op, the biggest Taiwan uh, uh, consumption co-ops, more than uh, 70,000 members. It is the biggest consumer co-op in Taiwan and has branched out a lot of Subunions, foundation, co-ops, and associations, including a housing co-op and a green energy co-op. But I just want to uh, share one more thing: is design. What, what is design? And I think design is, uh, to me, is uh, the the key point is the appropriate technologies. There's a picture uh, in 2006, uh, 2000. Okay. 16, the lot of uh, 
taxi driver uh, together in the president hall, uh, in the front of uh, president hall to anti Uber parade. This, this association called the Old People's Taxi, Old People Taxi Association. Actually, it had engaged in many democratic movements in Taiwan since 1995. The driver were uh, assembled through the, the ham radio, the amateur radio. Do you, do you know that? It's a very long time ago. What ham radio? Okay. They they just driving and two sides of protest as a way to express their view on certain social issues and engage a lot of uh, democratic activities. So uh, after Uber was exiled by Taiwan government, they start to use the line <laughs> as a social media based taxi booking system as many other taxi associations or unions in Taiwan. They will use that. So I think there is always an alternative one can have many choices, utilize any tool which is more convenient to, to the user. Whatever you use, the WeChat, Line, Watts, APP app, or a local app for going taxi. This is what, what I mean, the appropriate technology means. The story provides that it's not the technologies, no matter old or new. Turn networks into platforms but networks make platform possible. It's in two days, <laughs> I, I feel really sleepy. Uh, <laughs> in the two days, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of co-op leaders and coder designer from mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and some US uh, friends from CoLab and other countries worldwide team up in two night groups. And they coordinate to create apps, website, or like visualize storyboard uh, according to the needs of the different co-ops. So in the, in the, in the co-op zone uh, two, we have three themes. One is we focus on the self-organizations, the enriching and the internet techno uh, technical liter liter literacy and efficiency on man and machine, like the tools can develop for human and machine. The second thing is a uh, co-op platform. Uh, we enhance the co-op uh, the co and co-op linkage, uh, different co-ops, inter-organizations, collaborations, something like that. And third is accessible uh, resources. Okay. Accessible resources is more similar like uh, appropriate technologies. So uh, we can you know, have the good I don't know uh, your guys' the situation, but in Taiwan, China, when we talk about the co-op, the young person will say, oh, it's old, it's very old, right? Not fancy, co-op. I want to use the <laughs> Instagram or Facebook. So we want to, to uh, recreate a, a cultural movement. <laughs> it's not old, it's important, maybe energetic synth. And so we have the, oh, it's, the thank you for Danny actually from CoLab. They uh, helped the, we cre create a, a, criteria, a criteria of the uh, judges. So we have three uh, criteria. The most important is that everybody feel uh, important. So the first one is interesting. Two, you, you should meet the real need, simple and effectively. Three. Advance, uh, you should have the evidence of the sustainability or border applicability. And, okay. But, okay, very few. Uh, taking loots, when we, when we say taking loots, uh, uh, we have the subtitle in the uh, co-op song two. Um, the main purpose is very clear, right? The main object um, of that is make is affordable to the for the farmers or for the, the poor guys, and then you can make economy of scale and make the service useful for them. But I think it's not only for affording expensive new technologies together, but also for avoiding digital gentrification as well, because we we, we you really find a lot of new fancy technologies, 
but to some community or some villages, they do a lot of digital gentrifications. The, the rich community, the rich village will get well far from the, the poor. And the second thought is um, I want to try to uh, make two kind of people together. One, we call new human or new man, just who, those who have been transformed by social movements. And uh, another, digital, uh, and, uh, digital uh, natives. Uh, when, we, when we use the, the word network or technology, I think a lot of meanings have been contem contaminated. It's time to reconsider the, the new meanings of the two words. I believe it's possible for network to make common, common in, precisely because uh, cost creation is the best way to recapture the social use of the productive value. So we must think the production of space and the space of flow to articulate the new human who has been transformed by the social movement and the new generation human, I mean, digital natives. In short, the new social society is to enable post-human society to relearn the social life because a lot of society is not social. Right? Third, uh, <laughs> We, we know, uh, we know uh, one thing is the financial uh, tsunami is certainly not evidence of the collapse of the new liberalism, far from that. But it has triggered, triggered a boom in Europe, uh, co um, cooperation movement, just like a rise of the South Korean and the emerging co-op movement in Asia, uh, Itami, uh, Tatsumi after 1997. So when we talk about the platform uh, co cooperativism today, we must first have the cooperative movement. We need more social movements. We must face the real struggle, especially class struggle, and more symbiosis of each co-ops. And to end, if we want to end neoliberalism, it's not only by rebel, but to create. It's only necessary to make your own practice in max sense. A living labor is a independent variable rather than a variable. And for social activists, the world is created by the conflicts of to create new human beings. For architects, it is uh, necessary to master the technology that start the world for artists to reshape the society only by, you know, to the, of, of the near future by emotionally. For hackers, improve technologies seems means change the world. But they all forgot the world is not only behind at the, their front door, <laughs> but also between them. So the current social life is always construct by the imagination of the future social life. Now there is no, and there will be no future. This is my last sentence. We're back to the California ideology. In the, in the uh, last second phrase of the article, it says, it is not necessary for us to assert our own life, if not in circumstances of our own choosing. But we can read it conversely and fulfill it in a cooperative way. Thank you very much. <laughs>